Hello, this is Bud Frable from Midpoint Bearing. Today's presentation is called Bearing Training Part 2. It is designed for the beginner and should last approximately 30 minutes. Today's topics will be midpoint bearing overview, a little bit on my background, and then within the bearing training, I will cover storage and handling, and then gray market and counterfeit bearings. You might think at first, these two topics don't seem to go together, but in reality, these two are very related because the objective is to get the best product in your hands and into your application. And both storage and handling and gray market and counterfeit are keys to ensuring that you have good product. And then we'll finish it up with a wrap up and contact information. Midpoint bearing overview. Uh, Midpoint bearing was established in 1985. Uh, we are a distributor of bearings and power transmission products. We currently have four locations, California, Texas, Oklahoma, and Indiana. California is where our corporate headquarters is located. Midpoint bearing specializes in four major industries, the wind turbine repair, electric motor repair, steel mill equipment, and the pump repair industry. Midpoint Bearing is a factory authorized distributor for SKF, Koyo, NTN, Nachi, Scheffler, Timken, and other bearing related products such as CR seals, Aegis grounding rings, Benchmark Thermal, US Seal, and many others. Bud's background. I grew up in a small town called Napoleon, Ohio, on the northwest corner of Ohio. I served in the U.S. Army for five years. After the Army, I became a steel rule die builder. Uh, during that time, I started taking uh, college classes and continued to finish my mechanical engineering degree from Cleveland State University. And then I spent 13 years at Coyo Bearing in the engineering department. And in 2012, I was given the opportunity to work for Midpoint Bearing. Now we'll start with our bearing training. The first topic we're gonna to cover is handling and storage. Um, within this section, we'll touch on what is by the book, what is implied, harder than it looks, we'll see what that means, and shipping. Bearings can fail in multiple different ways, uh, lubrication issues, fitting and mounting, fatigue, and handling and storage. Um, some might argue the numbers are plus or minus this or that. It's not really that important. What I'm looking at is the fact 10% due to handling and storage. To me, this sounds preventable. So we'll start with the handling storage segment of our bearing training. Um, by the book, uh, most bearing manufacturers dedicate very little um, in their catalogs with the storage and handling of bearings. These items are very important, but in many cases, people consider them common sense, so they don't discuss them very often. I went through all the different bearing manufacturers' catalogs and pulled out a few keys and threw them together, such as store your bearings in a cool, dry place at room temperature, they would like them stored in a controlled humidity. I've seen different numbers, but it seems to be fairly common to say less than 65% humidity. They would like the packaging to remain intact. They don't like them to be stored on the floor. They don't like their bearings to be stored in direct sunlight. And this is why you're taking training. They want bearings to be handled by well-trained operators. From everything we gather from in the books, there's a lot that can be implied, and I think it's important to read between the lines. You'll see that some of these bullet points all reflect back and forth to each other, but uh, here's what I 
imply out of the recommendations. You want to make sure you place a dampener between the bearings uh, to avoid vibration. If your bearing shelf is metal on a cement floor next to a machine, that vibration will transfer up to your bearings. So you want to put a dampener in between. If possible, store your bearings flat. If you cannot store your bearings flat, what can occur is a bearing standing on end. All of the weight of the inner ring, the rolling elements in cage, can be carried by two or three rolling elements. And if vibration is getting to that bearing, you have a higher possibility of having false burnelling. There is no need to measure your bearings. Store bearings in a neatly organized fashion. Keep bearings in their packaging until they're ready to use and minimize the handling. Harder than it looks. Very little is written about warranty pertaining to handling and storage. Most bearing manufacturers warranties stress free of manufacturer's defect. Now, what is not covered? Awesome forklift drivers, well-placed packaging nails, questionable packaging, unsupported pallets, and nice truck deliveries. Our goal is to grab a bearing off the shelf and be 100% confident there's nothing wrong with it, but this is harder than it looks. Um, I did my best to pull every bearing manufacturer. I wasn't trying to point the finger at one guy or the other, but as you can see, we get all different kinds of damage from broken boxes to crushed crates, split boxes to totally out of the package bearing. If you're having a shop tour of maybe your biggest customer or your key customer and they glance over and see how your bearings are stored and they're stored as a total disaster, some boxes are open, things are out of place, very unorganized, what will the customer think? Are they going to think maybe they'll handle my motors with the same care? Do you think they'll feel more comfortable if they see a well-maintained storage area? Maybe they'll think, I know my motor's in good hands. Remember, perception is everything. In the overall physical life of a bearing, shipping and handling is a very small period of time. But it's critical because during that time, that product is moving from point A to point B. So they can be subjected to vibrations, the environment, uh, the person handling or how they're being handled, and other uncontrolled elements such as weather. Remember the pictures I showed from the beginning with the forklift driving a hole through the side of your bearing box, um, pallets not stacked properly. So many mishaps can happen. It's important to do the best that we can to ensure the product gets to you in its best condition. At Midpoint, we do everything possible to get that product to you in the same condition as we received it from our suppliers. Um, here are the steps that we use in each of our warehouses. We use cardboard corners to brace the box. We add dunnage to fill all the internal contents so the bearing can't move around in the box. We also double box. So once box A is packed, we then follow the same procedures of the box inside of a box. And we band and tape our boxes. The reason we tape is because if you only band our delivery drivers might decide to use those bands as handles, and that's a great way to drop your bearings.
If your order is large enough that we will be using freight, we box the individual product in the same manner as previously shown, and then we select and fill a pallet size container. Do the same thing, fill it with as much dunnage as we possibly can to keep the bearings from moving. We band and mummy wrap our product. Shipping can be difficult, but you need to try to pay attention to some certain keys, such as bearings should be shipped in a flat position where possible. Some bearing sizes and arrangement of different bearings fitting into a box sometimes forces you to ship a bearing in a different position. But if possible, we try to ship everything flat. We add as much uh, impact absorbing dunnage material to protect the bearing in its shipping process. Pack tight so the contents are unable to move within the shipping carton. It's also very important that you inspect your incoming packages. Check for proper dunnage. Check the condition of the internal boxes. It's very important to use some common sense also. Rarely is a crushed box from a well-packed carton damaged to the point of unusable. The damaged box most likely will not cause damage to your bearing, but it's important to note it. Our next section in our bearing training is gray market and counterfeit bearings. In this section, we'll discuss what is gray market, what is counterfeit, not worth the risk, and know your distribution channel. To start, we will define gray market bearings and counterfeit bearings. Gray market bearings are bearings that are sold through distribution channels that are legal, but not official or authorized or intended by the original manufacturer. Counterfeit bearings are bearings that are fake replicas of the real product. This is used to take advantage of the superior value of the product being imitated. The authorized way that OE equipment gets to the end user is the parts manufacturer manufactures the product, sells it to an OEM for sake of making things easy. Bearing manufacturer sells their bearings to, let's say, John Deere, who then manufactures a new product of a tractor. You go to the store and you buy that tractor. So that is the proper flow through original equipment. The proper channel that bearings get into distribution is the parts manufacturer sells directly to the distributor, who then in turn sells that product to the end user. The best thing about this is that relationship between the parts manufacturer and the distributor allows you to have engineering support if there's any issues. We have the support of their local sales staff to help us if we need a pricing this or a pricing that or anything that occurs. It's that direct relation with the part manufacturer that we can trace all the way back. Very important to buy through authorized distribution. How do counterfeit bearings get to market? Now there's multiple paths that these things can go through but I tried to summarize it into what I believe is the easiest path or the most common path. So you have a bearing manufacturer or a parts manufacturer and a counterfeiter either purchases from the original distribution or from the original manufacturer and reverse engineers this product so they can make a counterfeit product. This counterfeit product is then sold to a distributor or overstock warehouses or anything along those lines and then that product is then sold to you, the end user. Usually if the price is way too good, it probably is either a gray market or a counterfeit product. How do 
gray market bearings get to the marketplace. So manufacturers will sell their product into the original equipment industry. And at the end of the year, maybe, or they're trying to cut back on inventory, an OEM will say, hey, this is excess inventory. And this excess inventory will be say, hey, we need to get rid of this, get it off the books. So it might be sold into a distributor at a lower price and then passed on to the end users. Many times also, this excess inventory can actually come directly from the manufacturer. There are other routes where this inventory can get into this channel. For example, some overstock warehouses or even distributors might have a deal with the parts manufacturer and import them. Or an overstock warehouse will buy this excess inventory and it find its way to distribution and then onto the end user. Now, granted, these are official product. It is just not following the right chain. So it is not backed by the manufacturer's reps in that particular country or have engineering support. Now I put all the maps together. Nice and easy for everyone to read, right? Well, I truly just want to put two X's up here and say our goal should be to stop counterfeit and gray market bearings. If the price is too good to be true, there may be something wrong. Trust your gut, follow your instincts, and buy through authorized channels. All of the major bearing manufacturers are part of the WBA, the World Bearing Association. And one of the large pushes of the WBA is to stop fake bearings. A lot of people are like, well, I don't get it. So we're gonna answer the, but why? Here's the, but why? In design, when you're designing a bearing into an application, you reach out to their OEM and they provide you as much information possible. You're gonna take that information and you're gonna run calculations, you're gonna do testing, and you're gonna use all this to make a professional decision on what the best bearing is for the application. In many cases, you provide samples or prototypes that will be tested and verified to ensure that they meet all of the different criteria that you laid out in the beginning. Now, the engineer that works on this application is gonna expect that that product that you purchase is going to meet or exceed the ABMA, American Bearing Manufacturers Association standards. All of your major bearing manufacturers product meet or exceed these standards. The issue with greater counterfeit bearings is you don't know how they got to market so you have no idea if they truly meet these standards. So to summarize on that statement, if you purchase gray market or counterfeit bearings, can you guarantee gray market bearings will meet the original manufacturer's specifications? Will the manufacturer warranty the gray market bearings? Do counterfeit bearings meet the ABMA standards? Does anyone warranty counterfeit bearings? Well, I think that's pretty easy. Uh, the answer to all of these questions is a resounding no. If you purchase gray or counterfeit bearings, is there a risk? When it comes to counterfeit bearings, if the price is too good to be true, you might want to question your distributor. Counterfeit bearings do not live up to the ABMA standards, so there is a possibility of a bearing failure that can cause physical damage to equipment or people. It's never worth the risk of a liability. Plus, counterfeit bearings are illegal. The below two images, one is of Scheffler, FAG bearing, and the other is SKF, both destroying thousands of dollars of counterfeit bearings. 
They destroy these bearings because they not only damage their name, they care about the risk to your equipment and people. They engineer this product to be safe and validated and verified. The counterfeit bearings take none of that into account. Same question for gray market bearings. Is there a risk? The scenario is the same. If the price is too good to be true, you might want to question your distributor. A bearing failure, same as a counterfeit bearing, can cause physical damage to your equipment or people, and it is not worth the risk of liability. Granted, gray market product is genuine, but it is not through an authorized channel, so we cannot guarantee that specifications are correct. Also, you don't have the support of the manufacturer's engineering and sales staff. And you've reached the end of the bearing training, gray market and counterfeit section. I hope you enjoyed this section. Um, it's very important to understand that understanding the authorized channel, how critical, how important that is. The goal of both of these, storage and handling and the gray market and counterfeit section, is to provide you with the best possible product, being able to trace this product back to the manufacturers if there's a failure so we can give you the best service and support possible. This is the only way that we can do this. The price sometimes is a little bit higher, but you get what you pay for, and we're always there to help you, and we will only sell you authorized products. Again, I hope you enjoyed these topics. The topic of handling and storage is covered in Bud's Take issue number six. Counterfeit and gray market bearings are covered in Bud's Take issue 26. These are both available at midpointbearing.com slash Bud's Take. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out to me directly at bud at midpointbearing.com and I'd like to give a special thanks to all of our bearing suppliers for the images that I've used for this presentation. Once again, I'd like to say thank you. And again, if you want to learn more, please read Bud's Take on midpointbearing.com. Thank you.